Good morning, church. It's so nice to be here. So nice to be with you guys. You look amazing. I love all the masks. For any of you who, like me, have an accent, you will know how you need more grace than the others to wear a mask. I'm going to make sure to make sure you speak to each other and say, say to your neighbor, God is good. And if you have an accent, you know that you have no idea what the person said. You're two feet from one another. You wear a mask. And even with that mask, people ask what you're saying. So um, I find it funny. One of the funny things is when I order food at the drive-thru, my wife is beside me. I ask three times the same thing. Sometimes I get something different than I ask for. But sometimes my wife just beside me is just screaming th throughout the, like, through the car, be like, it's a Big Mac. <laughs> like, come on. But um, I'm excited to talk to you guys this morning. And uh, the topic of the month is overcoming. And uh, I've been journaling. I've been asking God what he wants to say for this morning. And there's a word that really burned in my heart. And uh, when it comes to overcoming, I feel that God wants to remind us something. Um, is that it's all about grace. And that everything we do is rooted in grace. So I want to talk about grace this morning. And as I start, I want to uh, open with a quote from Billy Graham. And he said, All religions are trying to find God and gain his favor by their sacrifices and good deeds. But Christianity is different. Instead of us searching for God, God is searching for us. This is why Jesus is so important, because he came down from heaven to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. He brought us to God. And that's the foundation of what I want to talk about this morning. When we speak about overcoming, most of you may feel, I need to do more, I need to pray more, I need to read my Bible more, I need to do this more to gain something from God. You may be thinking, someone in my family, you have like struggle in relationship, you have struggle in your health, whatever is the, the thing you need to overcome, you might think, what do I need to do to get God's grace, to, to, to get something from God. And that's not the way Christianity works. There's nothing you can do for God to do something for you, for God to give you your healing, for God to give you, um, to heal your heart or to restore relationships. In the sense that the, the root of everything starts with the fact that we didn't deserve anything. And he came to us to restore relationship with us. Everything we, knew, we, we do need to be rooted in that reality that we've been chosen and that God came to us in Jesus to save us. So what I want to describe this morning, I want to look at what grace is and try to bring some clarity in how to live in grace but first, as a framework, I want to look at, uh, in which I want to talk to this morning, I want to look at um, Genesis 3, what happened at the beginning. Why are we in the mess we're in right now? If you look at the world today, I would say it's kind of a chaos around, like all around the globe. There's voices screaming for justice here and there, and it's chaotic what's happening in the world. And why, why is that? The answer to, to the chaos is found in Genesis 3. The right order is that there's a creator that created you and I, created the, the whole universe, and is delighted in created us. But in Genesis 3, you're going to find that as our Creator told us, if, if you do what I ask, it's all going to go well. Like everything He asks us to do is for our good. And when someone came and tested us, in, in, the, in Genesis 3, speaking about the snake, which represents Satan, and He come to question what God has said and 
When God said we'll die if we eat of the fruit, Satan come and tempt us and say, no, you, for sure you, you're not going to die. And what we've done as humanity is to say, that's what God has said. Maybe, it's, maybe it's, that's not true what he said. Why living from what he said, what the snake is saying might be more true. And we chose to switch our attention and our connection with God and to submit ourselves to the snake, which is Satan. And when we did that, what happened? What God said will happen, we died. Which means, dying means, spiritually, when we're born in this world, we are born unaware that there's a God and that he created us. That consciousness is dead. And we couldn't help ourselves. That's the way you and I are born. We come in this world and we think we're the best thing that ever happened to this world and we're going to save the world with our own strength and we're going to, we're going to eradicate evil in the world by our own strength. And, and that, that root of independence, I would do things my way, the way Adam and Eve decided to do things their way. God said something and they're like, ah, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Let me do it my way. That root, it's what we all struggle with, with today. God is saying something, there's his word, the Bible, to do things that he asks us to do. It's a battle inside of us because we like things to do our ways. And That's the context, that's where we're at. That's why it's chaotic. We decided to take matter in our own hand and to do things our own way, and now it's a chaos. Things fall in, into order. If you, if you give your life to Jesus, if you restore relationship with God, you're going to find a peace inside that comes by the fact that now things are back in their order. The Creator is... You, your awareness that your Creator is here it's restored, and you have relationship with him. The thing is that we couldn't make that right. We couldn't restore that relationship. So if any other religion, as I said at the beginning, is telling you if you want a God, if you know it's chaotic and you find your life is going everywhere and nowhere, just come and, and sacrifice this and sacrifice that, and God will probably, maybe approve your sacrifice and will will bless you you know so you buy god by doing sacrifices and everything but in christianity i'm here to remind you that you have nothing to sacrifice you have nothing to do to get god favor you have nothing to do for god to come and bless you because he's the one who came and sacrifice himself to give you the ability to restore your relationship with him. All the Bible is asking us to do is to accept that sacrifice, to receive that gift. And that gift, it's called grace. By grace, you can find a relationship with God without deserving it. And out of that relationship, you can live your life full of God. So grace, what is grace? Grace, you can't talk about grace without talking about justice. Grace and justice goes together. Justice is the foundation for grace. How do I know that? It's, it's a, a principle that is true anywhere. If if you look in Canada, the justice system, the, how do you call that, the general governor or the governor general, he's in charge of the justice system. So he's the one who can pardon um, criminals or anybody who's in jail, you know. He can release them, give them a pardon, grace them, because he's the one who has the ability to put people in jail. Grace can be given only by people who can bring justice. Grace can be released only by people who have the power to 
give justice. It's true in, in relationship. It's true, as I just said, with the justice system, because the justice system can put you in jail. They're the one who have the ability to release you as well. It's true in relationship. If someone offend you, you can ask for, ju for justice. If someone steals money from you, you can go to court and ask for your money back, for justice to be done. And um, because you can ask for justice, you're the only one who can release and give grace to the person who offended you, to the person who owe you money. So grace can be released only by the person who has the power to ask for justice. And as I started with explaining our, uh, that we are, we are at odds with God because of Genesis 3, there's an injustice between humanity and God. And God has the right to ask for justice and to say, you don't want to do life with me, you reject me as your creator. Well, justice is that because I created you, I can just turn off everything, turn off the light, you all disappear and justice is done. You're, you know, because of, of the offense you committed against me, I can destroy the planet and humanity. Why we're here is because there's a second option, there's some, something better than justice, is grace. The one who had the, the, the right to destroy us is full of compassion. That's God. Full of love, full of compassion. He look at you, he look at me, and instead of saying, let's get rid of humanity, he sacrificed himself because we couldn't help ourselves, and he paid the price that we owe. And as you pay the price, he, um, he chose when he did that to give us grace. We can reach God and have access to God only one way, by grace. By accepting the gift is paid for us. There's nothing you can do to reach God with your own strength, with, with your good deeds. Nothing. So when we talk about overcoming, you can fight as hard as you want and work as hard as you want. That's, no be, that's never going to be good enough to, to deserve your healing, to deserve your breakthrough, to deserve a promotion, to deserve whatever is your mountain, whatever is your giant. It's not going to be with your own works. But if you sit, sit back and you, you dwell in that grace that has been extended to you, you receive his love you receive his kindness, you receive his grace. Now, you're going to pursue your healing and you're going to receive your healing and receive your breakthrough and you're going to overcome not because of what you can do, but because of what he did. It's because of Christ that we can overcome. He has overcome the world. And when you accept him and he come and live in you, the one who has overcome the world come and lives in you. And it's, through, it's grounded in that reality that you can, you can declare and live out and overcome um, all the mountains around you. Make sense? So, something I, I wanted to address this morning is that as Christians, we always do the same thing. We start our Christian life when we get that revelation that we, we need someone bigger than us to come and rescue us. And we try different religion and we work hard and we, when we find it exhausting and someone come and give you the good news that you don't need to work, that someone paid the price for you to be restored with God, you give your life to Jesus, you're like, that's amazing. I don't need to do anything. I just need to receive his sacrifice and receive his grace as a free gift. And as you do that, the Holy Spirit come and live in you. And as he come and live in you, you fall in love with Jesus. I did nothing. And he, come, he came to me and 
you feel loved, you feel approved, you feel you're enough. And out of that passion for him, as out of that love you receive, you just want to do everything back for him. You give him back everything. A real experience of grace will lead you to, to give everything to God. You can't abuse grace and receive grace just to say, yep, I'm saved and I live the way I want. When you, when you experience grace for real, when you understand justice and grace, you just want you to give everything back to Him. But as Christians, we start our, our journey with our passion for Jesus and, and our love for Him, but we all fall back to, at some point, wanting to deserve that love. And we start to work as Christians to deserve God's love. And that's what I want to remind us this morning. That's what I, I feel is burning in my heart, is we all have that default mode that comes from the Garden of Eden. There's our flesh that is saying, you can do it on your own strength. We try to reach to God, even as Christians. We try to sacrifice time, food, whatever we sacrifice to say, if I do that, maybe it's going to come to me. And we, we move out of grace into justice when we do that. It's based on our own justice that we try to reach to God. As you try to overcome whatever you try to overcome in your life, we all have that inbuilt thing that is part of our flesh to say, if I do this, God will do that for me. And that's, that's what I come to uh, challenge today. I, I want to remind you of the story in Luke 15, verse 11 to 32. So you can read that at home. It's the old prodig prodigal story, the prodigal son. It's called as well the two sons story. And basically the, the quick summary is um, a father who has two sons. And he's a good father. He represents God. He's a good father. And he has two sons. The older son and the younger son. And the younger son asks for his inheritance and leaves the house. Doesn't want to have anything to do with his father. That son represents us, human, who decide to live our lives without God. We, he created us, gave us everything. We took what he gave us and we were like, bye, we don't want you to live with you. And we went our own way. And um, that, that younger son, when he spent everything and he's at the end of himself, a bit the way we are at the end of ourselves as, hum as humanity, like his, with all the chaos, suddenly as he has nothing left, he remembers that his father was good and that he was happy at his father's house. And that's the longing of humanity. We all long to go back to that time before the fall where we're in the Father's house and God, we were in connection with God's love. And uh, so he, he decided to go back to his, his Father's house. And when he go there, he justice wants that he doesn't come back as a son. He spent his inheritance. There's no inheritance for him left. So all he found to say is, if you would like to have me just as your servant, I would be delighted to, to be with a servant in your house. And that would have been fair, don't you think? Come back home, you, you spend all the, the inheritance. Yeah, you can come and serve until you pay your debt, basically, which would have been his entire life. Um, but what is done, the father in his grace, instead of wanting justice, the father said, he threw a, a, long, a, a big party, killed the best calf for him, put a ring on his, on his, on, on his finger, uh, the best robe he can find, and he, he, he celebrates the return of his son. That's the love of God that, instead of choosing justice, extends grace because all he wants is relationship with us. Beautiful picture of the reality of, of us with God. Now, when that party is it's starting, it's starting and when, when the father is celebrating 
the, the, the prodigal son returning to the house, the older son is angry, frustrated. He leaves the party and he's not celebrating. And why? I've, and what he said to his father is, I've been striving all my life for you, and you never threw a party like that for me. There's a, something in his heart where he was striving to try to get his, his father's approval, and it was never good enough. But his, his brother, who wasted everything, was celebrated like a hero. And that picture is a picture of us who gave our life to Jesus. We have that connection with God, and we live in the Father's house, but now we're striving to, to prove that we're good enough. We're striving to, to prove that we deserve to be in relationship with Him. And this morning, I'm here to tell you that whoever, whichever son you are, the Father loves you. All you want is relationship with you. That you have nothing to do for, for Him to love you. Nothing. Except just receiving that free gift of His love for you. He paid the price for you boldly to come in front of Him and say, I want relationship with you. I want to be with you. If you accept that gift, and maybe you already did, I want you to check your heart this morning. Are you striving to prove God that he, he made a good choice when he picked you? Or are you living in that reality that whatever you're going to do will, won't pay the debt back, but that you don't do things to get his love, to get his favor and his approval, but you do things because you are loved and because you have his appro approval? Do you overcome because you're dwelling in grace? Or do you want to overcome to prove something to God? Why I think it's foundational is because whatever is the challenge in front of you, if you rest in grace, it's going to be easy to overcome. It's going to be easier at least. But for sure you will overcome because with our own strength, we cannot overcome. But with Him in us, we can overcome anything. Jesus promised us that we will know trouble. But he said, but be of good cheer. I've overcame the world. So if, if we can pray through that, I would like to invite some of you to, to stand. I would like to invite Jonathan for some music. But the message I released this morning is not a do or don't, it's, a, it's an invitation to check your heart and your relationship with God. And you can be the first son or the, 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 the younger son where you, you actually have no relationship with God. Maybe in what I said, there's one thing you remember. You're like, I never thought of Christianity being different from all other religions. Maybe it's the first time you hear that you have nothing to do to get God's approval other than receiving freely the gift that He paid for you, that He wants to give to you. I would like us to close our eyes and just spend some time just connecting with God. If you live in justice and you try to get God's approval, it's a heavy burden to carry. It's exhausting. And I feel that God wants to lift up all these burdens of us trying to earn His love and His approval. He wants to come and refresh us by give, giving us that free gift, that grace. Grace is you don't deserve it. It requires you to be humble to say, I'm not going to do it with my own strength. I, I, I can't brag about being connected to God. I can't brag of having overcome something or another. The glory go back to God because you know that without Him, you couldn't do it. This morning, if it's the first time, you, you've never 
make peace with God or you've been trying through different means, working hard, proving that you're good enough in all kind of ways, I want to invite you to give up today. To give up to try to please God, to give up to try to, to reach to Him. And I want to invite you to allow Him to reach to you, for Him to come your way. Today He chose my words by me telling you He loves you. By me telling you, would you receive that free gift that He paid the price for to reconcile humanity with Him? He's so in love with us that instead of destroying us, instead of bringing justice, He chose to release grace. Would you accept His grace this morning? If it's you, I want to invite you to repeat that prayer to get together. together. Let's all pray together. But if it's you, you're in that situation and it's maybe the first time you pray that prayer, I want you to close your eyes and to speak to that God who loves you. And repeat after me, Jesus, I thank you that you came on the cross, that you came down to earth to save us. And Jesus, come and save me right now. I invite you in my heart. I receive your salvation as a free gift. I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. I want relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus. If it's the first time you pray that prayer, that's the beginning of a journey of receiving freely what he paid for, for you to have relationship with God. But this morning, I would like to invite anybody who feels you're striving and you, you're working really hard to please God. You're already a follower of Jesus, but you still like feeling that you, you need to earn his love. You, you identify yourself more with the first son in the parable I shared with you. So if you can stretch your hands in front of you. Holy Spirit. Highlight in my heart everything that is striving, that is trying to earn your love. Lead me into grace. Remind me of why I fell in love with you. I want to make some room this morning for you to walk back, to go back to the Father's house, that place where the Father is waiting for you with wide arms open, where you don't need to strive or to do anything for Him to love on you. If you identify with what I'm saying, would you stand where you are? We'd love to pray with you. If you feel that it's hard to connect with God, I'm working hard to try to reach to Him, try to connect with Him. Some of you, I feel you even um, gave up on trying to please God. It's too hard. I know I'm saved anyway. His grace is here to empower you to live in righteousness means the fact you know you're loved will inspire and lead you to follow him and to please him wherever he's going to go the way Jesus did he just followed his father he didn't try to prove anything that he was good enough so if it's you and you feel I never feel I'm good enough I always feel I have to do more Stand where you are. Because I feel God wants to break chain this morning. I feel He wants to extend, to remind you in your heart that He loves you. That's, even you standing is you an, an act of humility to say, I give up to try. And I stand in front of everybody to say, it's because of Him I'm here. And it's because of Him 
that I'm going to overcome, not because of me. Take humility to accept grace. His grace will empower you to overcome. Thank you, Jesus. Keep connecting with him and keep listening to his word. He wants to tell, to remind you this morning he loves you so much that he gave his only son, Jesus. This morning, let him, let, let the father come and wrap his arms around you and remind you that you're precious. And before that you've done anything, he was for you, he was proud of you, and he's still proud of you. It's nothing to do with what you can do. It's all about you looking just like him. So Holy Spirit, come and fill us up right now and brush off from us any performance, any striving. Whoa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. I invite you to walk back to that place of grace. Brush off the pressure that you have to perform with your own strength and receive His strength, His approval. And walk towards that giant. Walk towards that mountain because you know you are loved, not for you to be loved. We love you, Jesus. And I will end with this. If we can all stand. Whoa. Because I would like each one of us to face our giant right now. And the, 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 the thing you need to overcome in your life, since it's the theme of the month, I want you to close your eyes and picture what is that one thing you want to overcome? Fear? Depression? The need for a job? Need for a spouse? Whatever is the, the need or the challenge you have. I want you to face that giant not rooted in your own strength, but rooted in His strength. Jesus is in you. Jesus is with you. He has overcome the world. So I want you to look at that mountain, at that giant, and I want you to speak out loud, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. And as you speak, the name of Jesus is not a magical form formula. Is you declaring, not by my own strength, but by His power. Not by my own understanding, but by His power. Is you declaring the one who has all authority over your giants in the name of Jesus. Beautiful name who sacrificed everything he had for us to, be, to come back to life, for us to be one with God, and for us, with him, to overcome the world. So Jesus, we need you more than ever. Come here and reveal yourself, your love and your power through us. And we say, here we are. We surrender ourselves to your grace, to your love, we receive your love first so we can love in return. Whoa. Love on him for a minute. Just declare his name again over your circumstances, over your life, over your family. We love you, Jesus. We declare your name, a beautiful name. Keep speaking his name. When Steve was speaking earlier, I could, I could see him positioning himself as taking authority, not because of what he can do, but because of what Jesus has done. Declare healing over your own body. Declare restoration over your own family. Not because of what you can do, but because of what he has done on the cross. Whoa. He gave us back authority to declare restoration, reconciliation over all brokenness and all the chaos of this world 
you can bring you can bring peace as you carry Jesus in you as you declare his name over circumstances we speak we speak the name of Jesus over sickness and disease not out of our own strength but because we celebrate and declare what he already has done we love you Jesus